Hi, right, welcome back. Today we're going to be working on a 4 uh, This is an 03 unit, came out of a uh, F350 7.3 liter diesel engine, uh, dually, and this truck's set up for performance, so we're going to be beefing it up a little bit. Uh, additionally, I'm going to talk through all the different uh, updates that have to be done, parts that have to be installed that uh, address a lot of the common issues and, and pattern failures associated with these transmissions so that when it goes back on the road, uh, those problems don't reoccur. So, um, first off, we're going to be installing a Transgo Tugger Kit. Uh, that's by far the most commonly used and, and, in my opinion, the most versatile shift kit available for the e 4 d 4100 family of transmissions. Uh, you can kind of set it up pretty much however you need to uh, based on the, uh, the vehicle and use case application and all that. And at the same time, it's not overly costly. I think it's less than 120 bucks. So, um, and it contains some of those updated parts that uh, we're going to be installing. Uh, we're also going to be installing some Sonics parts as well as Raybestos blue plate frictions throughout the transmission and, um, and uh, you know, ultimately set it up for longevity and success. So I'll start from the front of the transmission and then work my way to the rear and I'll go through each of the, the different updates and procedures that you're going to be doing so that um, the transmission goes back in and will last a long time and like I said, those pattern failure type problems don't reoccur. So we'll start with the input shaft. This is a billet steel shaft. Uh, I recommend these for any time power levels are going to exceed about a thousand foot pounds of torque. This, the stock piece is fine for anything less than that, but if you're going to be, you know, high performance or especially if you're going to be high RPM, even if you're coming in under that thousand pound number, you really ideally want to build an input shaft. It's going to protect the transmission from, you know, from failure. The stock piece, you know, can and, you know, probably will fail after, you know, repeated uh, high RPM uh, launches and, and such. So um, that's the first upgrade we're going to make. Next comes the pump. So here we have the pump stator support, the stator itself, and then behind it is the pump body. So here we have our lineup for our valving. Uh, this is a Sonex oversized boost valve. Uh, it's O-ringed. I like these because they seal off the boost circuit completely. Uh, we have the um, boost spring and the pressure regulator spring out of the shift kit along with the uh, spring seats that also come in the kit. And then here we have the Sonex line to lube uh, pressure regulator valve. So I don't in stock, or um, excuse me, I don't install the stock valving. I pretty much replace it. And this is standard on every single one of these that I do. Uh, we also have the spring for the converter clutch control valve. This comes out of the shift kit. And then I have a Transgo um, on-off lockup kit here that replaces the pulse width modulated torque converter apply uh, valving that comes with the unit from the factory. So for the pump body, this is a completely remachined, uh, re reconditioned pump body. Uh, we're installing Sonex oversized pump gears, also brand new. Uh, it's not too often that I see the pump, you know, terribly damaged, scored up, etc. But uh, if we're talking performance or if the pump is, uh, it is messed up in any way, then you're going to want to remachine it, resurface it, both stator and body, like you see here. And then you always want to machine it to accept the uh, oversized gears. So it'll also get a new seal, bushing, and O-ring. So from there, um, these are the Raybestos blue plate frictions. This is the overdrive clutch. We're gonna put these everywhere in the transmission. The first major um, pattern failure corrective update we're gonna do is install a spiral snap ring in the overdrive return spring. So. The factory uh, spring likes to pop out because the snap ring is more of a conventional style. And when that happens, uh, the driver is going to lose fourth gear and the overdrive light will come on. Or if it only comes out partway, it's possible that the frictions will burn up. So either way, it's a it's a it's probably the most common problem with these 4100s. And uh, I mean, it, it can happen at any time. It doesn't matter how the vehicle is being used. It's just simply a, a poorly designed snap ring. Uh, so the spiral snap ring will prevent that from happening at any point in the future. So that's why we install them. So here's the overdrive drum. 
So you'll notice here, we have brazed the drum. There's actually a technical services bulletin out on this. Um, it was published sometime in the uh, either late 90s or early 2000s. But what happens is the two halves of the drum, you have an outer half and you have an inner half, uh, under heavy load, a lot of torque or high RPM, they'll actually separate and become completely decoupled and then they'll spin independently. And as a result, you'll lose, uh, you'll lose fourth gear. So you wanna have this done on every rebuild. And then the Transgo kit gives you an, uh, a beefed up snap ring for the overrun clutches. This is what we call a file to fit ring. So as you can see, I filed it already. Basically what they call for is you wanna have 1 16th of an inch between the ring, uh, you know, the ring ends when it's installed. If you try to install it out of the box without filing it, then it won't actually fit in the drum. We'll be also installing a new overdrive sprag. This is a one-way roller clutch. All the one-way roller clutches in this transmission need to be replaced. So you have your overdrive sprag, you have your intermediate, and then you have your low reverse sprag. All right, next thing I'll talk about is the center support. So the center support from the factory um, can sometimes cock sideways a little bit in the case. So you'll have your stator rings for the direct drum in here. Uh, these rings are sealing rings and you know, they basically seal off that direct clutch circuit. And when it cocks sideways on you, uh, these rings will asymmetrically wear out and then that'll cause blow by and then eventually the direct clutch will burn up. So what's done is, uh, I wanna say like something like 50 or 60 thousandths is taken off the face of, this, uh, of the center support. And then a stabilizer ring is installed in the case for the center support to basically, um, you know, rest against. So by doing that, you give it a stable foundation so that you prevent it from, you know, cocking sideways on you like this. And you protect your direct drum and clutches from premature failure. So we have two new feed bolts. This is your intermediate stack up. A uh, little plastic washer for the center support and then the second gear return spring. All right, let's move on to the direct drum. So all of the direct drums that came inside these four, uh, 4R100s for every single year were um, designed to accept a 45 element heavy duty sprag except for one year. And that one year is 2001. In 2001, Ford was uh, visited by the Good Idea Ferry. And that Good Idea Ferry uh, convinced Ford to begin installing a mechanical diode style one-way clutch. A mechanical diode style clutch is um, normally found in you know, light and moderate duty transmissions, vehicles like econo boxes, grocery getters, you know, grandma mobiles, things like that. Uh, they have absolutely no business being installed in a transmission that's going behind a diesel engine. So if you have a 2001 model year unit and you see a direct drum in there that, uh, you know, that's fitted with that mechanical diode, you need to replace the drum, get rid of the mechanical diode sprag and retro or install a good used uh, direct drum that's designed to take the 45 element heavy duty sprag. And uh, they're all made by Board Warner. Uh, we'll also go back with some bushings. And then this takes a five clutch stack up in the drum. The forward drum, there's not really a whole lot to mention here. Um, if, you're, if you're doing something real high RPM, real high performance, you know, especially if it's a racing application, you really don't want to use the stock drum. Ideally, you want to go with a billet forward drum. Uh, the stock drums tend to like to crack under, you know, under high load. They like to crack right along in here. So... Um, it's not worth taking the risk if the truck is going to see a lot of RPMs or, or be doing a lot of really heavy work. Uh, maybe it's a mud bogger vehicle or, or maybe it's uh, a drag vehicle. Either way, uh, I'd recommend you uh, swap out the forward drum with a billet counterpart. 
All right, on to the gear train. Sun shell, this is a new sun shell. Um, again, same deal. Uh, you can get a, a hard and high performance sun shell in here. Uh, if the stock shell or the shell that came in there initially on this assembly was not damaged or, you know, there's nothing obviously wrong with it, you don't need to replace it. It's not like a 4L60E that has to be replaced on every rebuild. However, if the engagement lugs here are worn, if they're like, you know, excessively rounded out or chewed up, you're gonna wanna change that out because otherwise the transmission, when it goes back in, will be real noisy. And, um, you know, that's that's not obviously desirable. But other than that, there's not a whole lot you have to do with the gear train. Now, uh, there's some folks, uh, you know, suppliers out there that will provide updated gears that are machine custom to accept uh, additional Torrington bearings or, you know, straight cut gears, things like that. I believe John Wood's one of them. Uh, BTS is another. And, uh, you know, if you, again, if you're running like a dedicated race vehicle or something like that, they may be something worth considering. But uh, other than that, um, the, the the back of the transmission is, is pretty strong, pretty stout from the factory. So we'll put new thrust washers in for the rear planet. Uh, the, one, the one other modification we'll do is we'll put um, a one-piece rear case bushing from Sonics in there. And of course, you have your new Sprag for the low roller. Um, a good deal amount of the shift kit components go into the accumulator body. That's this rectangular piece here. And um, if you have a transmission that's real late and harsh shifting from first to second, more than likely the accumulator valve and the one, two valve train here, which is this valve train right there, is, is it's probably sticking in the bore. It's a common problem with these, you know, maybe the second most common problem. And when that happens, the uh, the trans will shift very late and it'll be very harsh. So <clears throat> almost always that's your issue. And uh, by overhauling the accumulator body and putting a steel valve in there in place of the uh, coated aluminum valve that comes from the factory, you can uh, usually avoid that issue going forward. What else? Um, I think that's pretty much covers it. Uh, all new bushings in the transmission. Um, you know, new thrust washers, seals, O-rings, gaskets, all the obvious stuff. Uh, and then, oh yeah, one last thing, uh, torque converters. So <clears throat> you want to install a billet covered converter, especially if you're doing high performance. And the billet converters are, are a lot more resistant to heat. They'll protect the converter clutches because the, the cover won't flex um, under high heat, high demand, like a factory cover might. So uh, billet converters can be very costly, but they're well worth the investment. Anyway, that's kind of the overview. It should give you a, a you know good substantive um, context around what needs to be done with these transmissions. And ultimately, uh, if you're going to build it yourself, now you know what, you know, parts you need to add to your shopping list. If you're going to have a, um, a shop do it, and if they're experienced with 4R100s, then they're already going to know and, you know, it'll be priced accordingly. But if not, you can have that conversation with your transmission builder and, you know, at least if nothing else, get a sense for what he plans to do with your transmission uh, on overhaul.